So, enjoy everybody. Three summers ago, the U.S. national team captured the attention of this country with their dramatic run through the Women's World Cup. With an ideal blend of talent, personality, and heart, the states captured the biggest prize in the game. Now they begin the long journey to defend their crown. This year, they must qualify for the 2003 Cup in China. And today, the quest to rehoist the cup starts. Tonight, the U.S. women's national team kicks off its 18th year of competition. And in game number 268 of their storied program, the U.S. women host regional rival Mexico. Glad you're with us for the women's first game ever in the state of South Carolina. We're at soccer-specific Blackbaud Stadium here in Charleston. Welcome. I'm Rob Stone. This will be the U.S. women's first game since September 9th. And, yeah, it's a four-month layoff. There may be some rust. There may be some fitness issues. But April Heinrichs told me there is an unbelievable level of zest and zeal with these women just happy to get back on the field playing the game they love. We are equally happy to be joined in the booth by U.S. soccer legend Michelle Akers. And we talk about the U.S. team. You have to mention their offense, the most potent in the world. But a little different wrinkle today. Mia Hamm, not around. That's right. Mia is out for this game. She's decided to stay home and rest up from a chronic lower leg injury. Mia named the FIFA Player of the Year and also the world's leading goal scorer with 129 goals for men or for women. Obviously, the U.S. relies a lot on her, but Tiffany Milbert is up for the task. Tiffany has risen to new levels of scoring power and leadership on this team. She was named the MVP of the season for the WSA, the most prominent offensive player for the WSA, and Milbert is ready to rock. And we'll have more on Tiffany at halftime. You know, years past, this really wasn't much of a rivalry, but Mexico has really improved their game. This is the last time these two teams met, and Iris Mora, 50-yard goal, put Mexico up in the 67th minute. But Cindy Parlow, boom, two goals in the next eight minutes gave the U.S. a rare come-from-behind 3-2 to two victory. And tonight, these two regional rivalries renew their acquaintances. Packed house here in Charleston, standing room only. Kickoff when we return to South Carolina. Coming December 19th, 15 new channels on Time Warner Digital Cable. There's something for everyone. Enjoy the do-it-yourself channel, National Geographic. Discovery Civilization, and Home and Leisure. VH1 Classics, Great American Country, Inspirational Network, and Independent Film Channel. And for sports fans, Fox Sports Digital, Atlantic, Central, and Pacific, and Outdoor Life. All this and more coming December 19th, only on Time Warner Digital Cable. There's only one Lawrence Marshall Chevrolet, and it's right here in Hempstead where you'll always get our low marshal discount price on every Chevy in our huge inventory without all that phony baloney big city hype. Plus now, get a $2,002 rebate on the Chevy of your choice with low 5.9% financing. You like saving money, don't you? Then take the short drive out, Highway 290 to Lawrence Marshall Chevrolet in Hempstead. We clobber big city prices. Only ABC Family Channel's got Drew Carey in the game working five nights a week, making stuff up off the top of their heads. One hour of Whose Line Is It Anyway? Five nights a week at 10, 9 central on ABC Family Channel. Available on cable and satellite. you can depend on. The cars that last. You never have to look too far. Chevy. We'll be there. Always with you. Over 10 hours of music on one CD, the Philips Expanium MP3 CD player was made to go as long as you can.
play soccer by day and fight crime by night. They are the baddest mamas on the planet. Take that job, Turkey. Right on. Bowdy and Chastain. Brought to you by Bud Light, a proud sponsor of the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team. You chicks are bad. Yeah, we're bad. Real bad. <laughs> is brought to you by Bud Light, official beer of the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team. By Kit Kat, crisp wafers and milk chocolate. Give me a break, give me a break. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. And by Chevrolet, the cars you can depend on, the cars that last, will be there. And we are back live at Black Bog Stadium, the home of the A-League's Charleston Battery. Good to be back in the Deep South and sucking down my sweet tea, grits, and hush puppies all week. Dump some sugar on her, right, Michelle, like my mom taught me. That's right. It's good eating, but not, not, not too healthy. Here's our Avaya starting lineup. We begin with Mexico, and they'll be in a 4-4-2. That's right. Nanez, number seven, midfielder, a key to Mexico's success tonight. But she'll have a lot of her hands full <laughs> with Lil Fair and Fowdy in the middle. Speaking of those three, they're part of the 4-3-3 Avaya lineup of the United States. And Joy Fawcett, the anchor in the middle, as always. That's right, Joy Fawcett, superwoman. And she always draws the toughest assignments. And she always shuts them down. No problem, Joy, known as one of the best players in the world. Fawcett, a mother of three. There is a good look at April Heinrichs, head coach of the U.S. Women's National Team, assistant Bill Palladino, and goalkeeper coach Bill Whedon. On the other side, head coach Leonardo Cuellar, a former NASL player and captain of the Mexican national team. Julie Fowdy giving her team a little bit of a pep talk. And here is Leonardo Cuellar. Great resume for Leonardo and his team wearing black armbands tonight in honor of Pat Henderson, who recently passed away in Southern California. Coach pulled me aside yesterday. I want to make sure we got this on, that this woman has been real instrumental in coaches coaching life and also for this Mexican national team, really kind of helping them out stateside. And of course, our condolences go out to the Henderson family. We are just about ready for kickoff. Mexico in the green tops, white bottoms going left to right, U.S. In the red and the blue going right to left. Cindy Parlow, Tiffany Milbrit to kick us off and we are underway. U.S. playing with the flat back four. April uh, is very concerned, I guess, in trying to get the team ready to play in China against some of the best teams in the world, Norway and China, two of those teams. So tonight I think we'll see her experimenting a bit with the, the four in the back, but also the three in the back. And prepared for that. What you're referring to is, is the Four Nations Women's Tournament, which the U.S. will head to in China in about two weeks. We're in a span of five days. They take on Norway, Germany, and China. And also a bit of a sneak peek at the venues for the World Cup 2003. Brutal really, schedule for the U.S. Really chance for the States. Randy Chastain settles it. Back to Joy Fawcett. Wide open on the right. Kate Sobrero. I think normally the U.S. would play with three in the back and just go for it against this Mexican team. But again, April trying to get the U.S. team ready for the best in the world. So this is a, a great night to start off their training. This portion of the match brought to you by Haviland. Steal by Chastain. The lefty drives one into the box. Neo Quinones, goalkeeper for Mexico, scoops it up. Chastain in pursuit, keeps it inbound, wins it. Milbrit, bump from behind, throw in for the U.S. Chastain, very dangerous long throw. Harlow flicks it. McMillan, Lilly almost. Mexico clears it, but right to the captain, Julie Fowdy. Settles, looking for Lori Fair, intercepted. Patricia Perez then loses it back to Fair. Fair, Lily, in the box. Nice speed. The center 
That one broken up. First corner kick of the game for either team. All U.S. early. That's got to make April happy. That's right. I, I think the U.S. is anxious to make a statement early. But Mexico better be ready to play. Otherwise, they're going to be digging out of the net the whole night. Well, Mexico says they're playing a 4-4-2. So a couple other numbers that are larger on the bottom frame. That two up top may become a one or a zero. Crowdy dispossessed there, but it'll be a throw in again deep for the U.S. Chastain comes over to take it. So on the throws or any really long penetrating balls, you're going to be looking for CP as a target in the middle. She's 5'11". Obviously great with her head. Her job here is just to flick it on and put it in front of the goal. Tough ball to handle. That one at about shin level. Carlo goes down trying to win it. Mexico gets it. Iris Mora spins, turns. Probably Mexico's biggest offensive threat. Quick foul there on Chastain. First whistle of the game. Monica Gonzalez will take the free kick. Drives it deep. Out, he flicks it. Lakeisha Bean has pretty much taken over this goalkeeper spot for the U.S. She really has. She had an outstanding season for the WSA. It was the MVP of the season for the goalkeepers. And uh, I think she's really excited to be a part of this U.S. team. We have yet to see the best of her. Nice little skill there by Chastain to flip it over. Valderrama to Lily. Danielle Slate. College senior at Santa Clara, won the national championship this year. That's right. She's been in and out of the national team for years now and has really started to develop into a nice player. Matured a lot. Skill has improved tremendously. I think April has some nice things in school for her. Great turn by CP. There's Parlo taken Ooh. from behind. Quick whistle. run and really what can this defender do but take her down bad mistake though because they're in shooting range and really i think that ref should have given her a yellow for that sydney parlow playing with uh, some groin issues kind of slightly pulled her groin at practice yesterday she was kind of a game time decision but she should probably get about half today the service into the box headed out drops right to chastain bumped off the ball regains possession then loses it It'll be interesting on free kicks today because uh, Mia is the primary free kicker for the U.S. McMillan looking for Lily just over her head. And Anna Del Bosque heads it out. Second corner of the game for the U.S. The U.S. is hungry. Great serve here by Mack. Into the box, just in the mix. Ooh, unlucky there by Lil. And CP in following up. That was, that was great up by the U.S. Service driven near post to Fawcett. And they're saying that was out of bounds. So a goal kick for Mexico. Opening five and a half minutes. All U.S. This portion of the match brought to you by Bud Light. Good look at Gina Eagleson. Played for San Diego and the Bay Area Cyber Rays this year in the WSA won a title for the Cyber Rays and was just released in the offseason. Foudy wins the ball. Chastain poked away from her, but another throw in for the States. Yeah, Mexico has the goal here to qualify for the World Cup, so they're on a mission. And it's going to be tough to start that mission out against the U.S., but there's nowhere to go but up. Well, two teams from the CONCACAF region are guaranteed spots at World Cup 2003. And then the third place team has to play a play-in game. And the U.S., Mexico, and Canada probably your leading candidates to win those two spots in the third and go on to that qualifying game. Here's a good look at Danielle Slayton, just a senior at Santa Clara University. First team All-American. Started classes Monday, she was telling us. She's got two psych classes, religion and art history, and she's already behind. Not a good way to be, huh? It sounds like me in college. Six days into your semester, and you're already behind. Of course, I was, she's got a good I, yeah, Exactly. I was behind for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I was not representing my country. I was representing my fraternity. Here's Lori Fair down the right side, chased down by Perez. That one gets away.
Lego building stars of tomorrow, Danielle Slayton. We've been spending a lot of time talking about her. She probably won't see that much activity today since the U.S. is dominating, but she is clearly in April Heinrich's plans. Youngest player to make the 2000 Olympic roster. Could be the overall number one pick in the WUSA draft February 11th by the Carolina Courage. She is a big presence and force in the backfield. Well composed, good vocal leadership. Yeah, and the WSA will really lend to her maturity on an even quicker pace. In the past, it was just however many games or training camps the U.S. could put together, and that's how you gain your experience. But now it's the league that really makes a difference in the development of the youngsters. Mexico trying to build it up. Here's Danielle Slayton. Lefty cracks it to almost midfield. Mexico recovers, bangs it back in. Very fair, challenging Monica Vergara. Gets whistled for it. It's an interesting call there. Let's see what Mexico can do on the ball here. Second foul of the game on the U.S. Monica Gerardo plays for the Washington Freedom of the WUSA. Two goals this season. Three-woman wall. Driving at far post. <laughs> that was dicey. Looked like Kate Sobrero diving in at about knee level with the head and missed it. Good chance here for the Mexicans, Michelle. Good chance by the Mexicans. A little uh, shaky on the marking. Ooh. Kate, as usual, going face first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She doesn't have much uh, stock in that old face. Anytime you look at Kate, she's got scars, she's got uh, broken nose, black eyes. Yeah, she's a mess. Tomorrow, ESPN has a full afternoon of college hoops coming your way to Eastern. Huh? Full ACC showdown. Georgia Tech takes on number four, Maryland. A little later in the week, Maryland takes on Duke. And then at four Eastern, New Mexico State visits Western Kentucky. College basketball season long on ESPN. For more information, as always, Log on to ESPN.com. Throw in for Mexico. Finds Mora. Kind of spin by Slayton. Nothing doing. Cross it. Clears it to midfield. Mexico regroups. Long ball. So far, it looks like Mexico is just trying to bang it up there and chase after it. I don't know if that strategy is going to be very effective against well, these four backs. What else are they going to do? I don't know. Maybe a little <laughs> yeah, possession. <laughs> And maybe recruit some you know, players from Brazil. <laughs> but they're quick and they're skillful and they know the game. Their, their culture is built around soccer. So I think it's in there. It is a little intimidating, though, to play against this U.S. team. Well, Coach Cuellar told us this program is about four years away from where he really wants it, really improving. He's spending a lot of time with the local talent back in Mexico with the under-15 and the under-17 and the under-19 national teams. And you know, he's got a lot of young faces out here playing today. It's a good chance for them to play A against the best in the world, and also to find out their, well, what, where they're a little weak at, and also earn some confidence playing against the best team in the U.S., or in the world, rather. And here they are now, the last couple minutes, possessing it to about midfield, and then just banging it in. Well, the strategy may be as well. The U.S. hasn't been together since September 9th. They're maybe a little shaky in the back. Communication may not be clear, so might as well put it in the mix, run after it, hope for a mistake. There's Julie Fatty at midfield. All kinds of time. Finds Tiffany Milbrett. We'll be featuring her at halftime. Yeah, obviously now Mexico is kind of sitting back. Nice turn by Lily. Looking for McMillan. That one a little too ambitious. Mexico's playing a low pressure defense here. Waiting for the U.S. to play into them. Wait for a mistake. Miss pass. Slicing run there by Milbrick got away from her a little too much. The U.S. is going to have to be very clever and patient in their attack. Get the ball wide, make good runs, good targets in the air, and play quickly and efficiently. Another throw in for the States this portion of the match brought to you by Phillips. i got to get me one of those flat screen TVs. Got any connections? i got, I got to <laughs> talk to these people at Phillips, man. they got good stuff. Chastain to throw in. This is as good as a corner kick. 
looking for Parlo. She wins it, flicks it. Lori Farron reigns, but it's Lily. What a rocket just over the ball. Lily on the left foot. A wicked strike by Christine Lilly, the most capped player in the world. Yeah, if you watch this, CP has got two Mexicans hanging off her, wins the ball, rebound comes out to Christine Lilly, who rockets it just a little high. Lilly she's, she's not going to miss that more than once, I'll tell you that. Lilly, the team MVP last season for the Boston Breakers at the WUSA. The National Soccer Hall of Fame in Orneana, New York, has a spot reserved for Miss Lilly. Oh, nice little move in the back. And then a little retaliation there. Monica Gonzalez dragged down by Lori Fair. Third foul of the game on the U.S. Well, Gonzalez has been doing her share of uh, saying hello to Tiffany Milbrett. Another look at that collision. Take that. Yeah, that's not a bad place to foul when they're third and you're attacking third there. Just s sends a little message. Gerardo, again, a long ball. Slayton, no problem. Clears it. Lily settles. That one got a little away from her. Took a bump there. No call. Gerardo plays it, though, right to Lori Fair. Here comes the counterpunch by the U.S. McMillan, Fowdy, slows it down. Christine Lilly finds Joy Fawcett. Long ball. Tended for Milbrett. Del Bosque plays it back to her keeper. Valderrama settles. Tries to get by Chastain. Nothing doing. Throw in for the U.S. Chastain has owned everything on that left side. Deep throw and finds Milbrett. One time ball across the box. That was a great little run by Milbrett. She is so clever and so dangerous in that 18-yard box. Big Sobrero has it. Drives another one back in the box off the line. Quinones banged it around. That'll be a whistle on Simi Parlo. You know, I don't know if the audience realizes how dangerous and courageous it is for the striker to go in when the ball is flighted into the six-yard box. You know a keeper is going to come flying out. Here we got the, a great serve in the six-yard box. You're really testing the keeper here. Cindy Parlo goes in to challenge her. But you don't know if that keeper is going to come out to catch it or box you. your head off. <laughs> You, you've had your head boxed off a few times, too, haven't you? Oh, yeah. That might, that by might my own keeper. <laughs> Brianna Scurry, are you listening? Although my dad would swear it was genetics anyway, so. This portion of the match brought to you by Chevrolet. In years past, the World Cup winner has not had to qualify for the next World Cup, and FIFA, the World Soccer Governing Body, changed those rules. So the U.S., even though they are the defending World Cup champs, has to earn a spot in next year's World Cup in China. And, you know, it, it's been a while since the U.S. has had to do something like this and actually have some pressure games that aren't Olympics or aren't World Cup matches. That's right, and it, they've changed the rule, actually, to make it fair across the board, or standard across the board for the men and the women. The, the men, if you won a World Cup, you didn't have to qualify. Um, Just have to host. That's right. And so now I've been complaining about that for years. <laughs> so now it's finally Somebody's the same. Somebody's listening to you. I doubt that. But okay. I think it's good experience for the team to have to go through that qualifying process. Milbert saves it, drops it to Chastain, drives one deep, broken up, Lily there to get it. Tiffany Milbert. Stutter, swings it, finds Lori Fair, man on her back, settles. Nice run by Kate Sobrero down the right side. The defender getting into the action, looking for her first international goal. Kate slows it down, finds Julie Fowdy. Well, that one got away from Julie a little bit. Harlow has to track back to win it. Drops it to Chastain who was on ABC Nightline with Ted Koppel earlier this week. They haven't forgotten about her, have they? Oh, they don't call her Hollywood for nothing. <laughs> Poor giveaway there, though. Monica Gerardo having a pretty good game thus far for Mexico. Good presence in the midfield for him. Dowdy easily wins that one, looking for Milbrook, just out of her reach.
talked about Lisa Nanez in the Avaya starting lineup, and really she's been pretty much a non-factor thus far. She's been quiet. That was Milbrook. Good little try by Milbrook. Trying to catch Quinones off the line. Quinones is a senior at San Diego State. And this is pretty much her WUSA tryout. She has a good match here. She has a chance of being selected in their upcoming draft in February. That's right. These friendlies mean more now than just getting ready for your national team. Really, it's a chance to be exposed to play in the best league in the world here in the U.S. with the WSA. If you're a fan of the WSA, several players out here have a very good chance to be playing for your favorite WSA team later this year. Danielle Slate, as we said, could be the number one overall pick. Abby Wambach, a potent striker from the University of Florida, not suiting up today. But she could be a very high pick, probably a first-rounder. And Mexico has a couple as well. As we said, Quinone is the goalkeeper. But probably, actually, I'll say definitely, Monica Gonzalez, a second-team All-American at Notre Dame. She will definitely be selected at some point. So there is some good young talent that can be seen playing professional ball for years to come out here today. Which has been a goal of the WSA, not only to develop our players, but really make an impact on soccer around the world. You know, it's a double-edged sword. Here we are developing the other teams, and then we have to play against them at the, on the world level to compete for a World Cup. Shannon McMillan down the right side, thinking about going 1v1. Kids got to beat. Pulls the African move. Has it the center? Easily, though, collected. Eagleson plays it deep. Nate Sobrero finds Lori Fair. I always love that African move. I just wasn't quick enough to pull it off. <laughs> There's Lori Fair. Drops it back. Slate. Long ball. Nice run by Lily. Can she get to it? The ball is rolling hard. Lily's got good wheels. Saves it. Head up. Oh, nice ball. Great run. Foudy. Sliding tackle there by Gerardo to break it up. Another corner kick for the U.S. This will be their second. This is, this is a great play. The U.S. is mixing it up here. A, a long ball. Oh, and then we had the tail end of a good... Uh, Lil found a good seam there in the, in the box for a good try by Foudy. Great run by Foudy. But this is, that's one thing about Christine Lilly is you can get those long balls into the corner and she's going to chase them down and make something happen out of that. A dog and a tennis ball. Go fetch. <laughs> Go hunt that down. This portion of the match brought to you by Kit Kat. Chastain, another throw in. Harlow again, sandwich, double team, flips it back to Lily. Where have we seen that before? Drive one near post. Little problems for Quinones. Now this Mexico team is much improved. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed, actually. In a short time, they've, they look so much more mature and composed on the ball. Much more skilled. They're getting stuck in physically. Well, a lot of these players play their college ball in the U.S., which means they're playing against the top-level talent in the world, so that is obviously, obviously has to rub off on them. And three of them played in the WSA this year, so their maturity level on the field at this high level certainly has increased. And I think Mexico as a country has really made it a commitment to qualify for this World Cup, and they're starting to invest more money in their women's program, which is really a departure from their traditional thoughts of soccer. There we go again, changing the world. <laughs> Lori Fair throws it in. Tiffany Milbert posting up, spins, fires, Parlo! Oh, great save by Quinones. Tremendous build up and tight area by the U.S. Quinones, right place at the right time. Chastain exactly right. wins that. Foudy, being strong in the air, drops to Brandy. Finds Parlo, who was just denied at the doorstep. Parlo, far post. Lori Fair, Janet McMillan, storming. That's a great goal by the U.S. Great goal by the U.S. Woo! Cindy Parlo just picked out Shannon McMillan there. Cindy Parlow can not only stick it in the back of the net, but she can put it on a dime 
on McMillan's head who slots it in the back of the net. That's just a precision serve. And a, a great run by McMillan. International goal number 36. This from the Phillips goal cam. Yeah. Upper 90. That is sweet soccer, folks. In Charleston, South Carolina at Blackbaud Stadium, Rob Stone, Michelle Akers with you. The U.S. has just gone on top of Mexico 1-0. Shannon McMillan, a brilliant header on a great service from Cindy Parlow in the 22nd minute. And they're looking for more now. Chastain spots up, drives one. Again, far post. A little too much for McMillan in Mexico. Just hammers it out high and wide. I think that's what we're going to expect to see more of. Uh, Mexico is kind of packeted in the back there, so the U.S. is going to have to go wide and hit some serves and win the 50-50 balls or the head balls to score some goals. Great runs off the ball thus far from the U.S. And they really seem Bowdy, fresh. McMillan, yeah. And McMillan, again, your goal scorer. This team really wins it. Tries with a little give and go with Milbrit. Fowdy steps up. Lily finds Milbrit. Has Parlow on her left. Lily cuts right. Drops it. Lori Fair, one time ball. Broken up, falls right back to her. Then it's Fowdy. Kate Sobrero down the right side. Kate's been kind of sneaking into the offense lately and showing some offensive moves. Drives her. McMillan flicks it out of bounds corner kick for the U.S. McMillan, she played at U, U of Portland as a forward and came to the U.S. team and was, uh, her position became outside midi, which she wasn't her favorite position, but she's got wheels and she likes to get forward. Now she's up front again and I think we're going to see a lot of action from her. That one's driven to Fowdy. Tough to get up and head it. Tomorrow, right here on ESPN2, it's an afternoon of women's hoops beginning at 2 Eastern. Houston visits Texas Christian University, the TCU Horn Frogs. And then a little bit later, George Washington taking on Xavier for Eastern 1 Pacific. ESPN, your exclusive home for the NCAA Women's Basketball Championships. And this portion of the match brought to you by Nike, the U.S. up 1-0. Shannon McMillan with the goal in the 22nd minute. Tiffany Milbrick. Scoops it, finds Lily. But broken up there by Gina Eagleson. Eagleson, captain of the 99 Mexican World Cup team. It's her 22nd game. For Mexico, Julie Crowdy. All the way across the field, finds Sobrero. One time ball to Fair. That'll be a goal kick for Mexico. Fair was a fullback back when you were playing. Kind of moving up to the midfield right now. Is that working out? I think she really enjoys it up there. I watched her play in the WSA season, and she she has become more of a leader, more assertive on the field. And I think she's looking to carry that role into the U.S. team as well. She talked to me earlier about the possibility of Kramer taking her position today. So I said, yeah, you got, <laughs> you got some competition. So she's looking to step up. And Kramer, you're referring to Alicia Kramer, 19-year-old at BYU, second-team All-American this year. Last year as a freshman, she was first-team All-American. April Heinrich said she's fighting a little bit of a cold, but is certainly in serious contention for a starting spot, and she'll probably see some playing time in the second half. She's like 5'10", 5'11", big girl in the middle, very composed on the ball, very good playmaker. Bowdy, good ball, finding Milbrit. Can Millie win it? No. That does earn a corner kick for the U.S. This will be their fourth. Monica Gonzalez has been busy organizing that Mexican back line. The refs decide to change that call and make me look bad. The goal kick for Mexico. The goal those referees. Man. There is 
is Rachel Wu, the referee, a proud graduate of the Colgate University. <laughs> there's there's going to be Colgate theme worked into this broadcast a little bit later, so the Colgate alums watching, hang on. Justine throwing, Joey Fawcett. Just another day at the office. Joey's had many a day at the office. Told us yesterday she wants to continue playing with this team through the World Cup and through the next Olympics. And probably have five more kids along the way. <laughs> Not miss a beat. I mean, three kids, and she's back playing professional ball within weeks after it. She's just an amazing. My wife isn't, isn't even entertaining thoughts about being pregnant. She's already bitching and moaning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Here's Foster, a professional athlete. She's got three kids running around at the top of her game still. She's a better woman than I'm a man. She's a freak of nature. In a good way. In a good way. <laughs> this portion of the match brought to you by Lego. Uh, she'll love to see that age brought up. Thanks, guys. <laughs> right? <laughs> Actually, by the time she's done retiring, Katie, your oldest, will be starting for the that's, national team. That's right. It'll be mother-daughter playing together. Keisha Bean runs out of her net to keep that one in bounds. Three goalkeepers in this camp right now, Lakeisha Bean, Hope Solo, and Jamie Pagliarulo. And April told us all three pretty close in contention, but right now, Lakeisha just stepping up and is the number one keeper for them right now. Really, her career resurrected courtesy of the WUSA. She was pretty much out of the national team picture. Yeah, that's really happened to a lot of players here in the league. Patopoulos is one of those. Daniel. Story Bryan. Yep, both players, Danielle Patopoulos, Story Bryan, who have rich histories with the U.S. national team and are now back on the team and could see action today. In fact, Danielle Patopoulos almost got a start today if Cindy Parlow could not have gone in them. Sydney Parlow really playing some great soccer right now. Heinrichs told us we cannot win in China without Sydney Parlow. That's why they were thinking about resting her and not pushing that groin right now. It's, it's not cold, but it's a little brisk out here, and there is definitely a threat of rain. In fact, we still may see some later in the, in the match. If that happens, I'm sure Sydney Parlow will get an immediate seat on the bench. Parlow with an assist already today. So far, no sign of injury for Parlow. No, nothing. Playing she looks fine. Well. Another throw in for the States. Carlo gives it up to Chastain. And Cindy will go deep into the box. Get that Mexican double team to wrap themselves around her and try and flick this throw in. It used to be my job. <laughs> You're happy to give that one up. I'm very happy to give that up. <laughs> Chastain, Carlo. Everybody misses it, but that'll be a corner kick for the red, white, and blue. 31st minute, USA up 1-0. Shannon McMillan with the goal in the 22nd minute. Fourth corner of the game for the States. Christine Lilly will take it. Lefty service. Great ball. Fowdy clicks it. Can't get enough on it. Mexico clears. Lori Fair and Kate Sobrero in pursuit. Kate gets it. One times it in the box. Milbrick buzzing all over the place. Great vision, though. Looking for Parlow. Couldn't quite hook up. Here comes Mexico. Controlled counterattack. Again, it's Gerardo. Finding Mora. Now working the left side, but Fowdy steps in to break it up. Trisha Perez wins it back from her, then loses it to Lori Fair. She finds Lily, and she'll drop it back to Danielle Slate, and the U.S. regroups. Mexico still looking for their first shot on goal. Mexican midfield is a bit overwhelmed at this point. Shannon McMillan laid out, and we're going to see yellow. Lisa Nanez receives the first yellow of the game in the 32nd minute. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be pleased. The yellow card comes in. Pass into McMillan. Oh, there's a, a nice little stick there. Nowhere for Shannon to go. Right up on her. McMillan will take the free kick. Looks like Parlow taken down, either slipped or dragged down. No call. 
So goal kick for Mexico. Lisa Nanez with the yellow card. This portion of the match brought to you by Avaya. We take you back to the 22nd minute, about 10 minutes ago. Sydney Parlow down the left side finds Shannon McMillan. Check out that header, folks. Her 36th international goal. Parlow to McMillan. 1-0 USA. Mexico showing some composure right now as they slowly build it out of the back. And Adele Bosque down the right side finds Vergara. And then boom, Brandy Chastain comes in to clear it out. U.S. out shooting Mexico 9-2 right now. Yeah, Mexico's doing a nice job of getting it out of the back and trying to play make, play defeat, one or two touch, a nice rhythm, and then it just gets to be a little much once they get into their attacking third. Oh, right there is a great example of it. Trying to flight one into the box. There's no one within 20 yards of that green. I had a better chance of running out of the booth and winning that one than they did. I think they're very respectful of the U.S. attack, so they're keeping numbers back. And uh, if they want to score against this flatback four, they're going to have to commit more numbers forward. Pace of this one kind of slowing down a little bit. It is. Good look at Kate Sobrero. Defender the Boston Breakers. Nice ball. Finding a wide open Tiffany Milbrit. Tiffany. A little jitterbug cuts. Defenders hate going against her. They got no idea what she's going to do. And she's got those turbo jets too. You think you got her and you step in and all of a sudden you're feeling the breeze from her running past you. Bang, great first step. Here is Milbrit. Back to the goal. Finds Lily. She's got a left foot, rips it, deflecting, storming. Christine Lily's got the U.S. up 2-0. And that ball was moving too. That's one of the things about Christine Lily's shots is it looks like it's coming right at you and then the thing starts moving and you have no idea where it's going. Beautiful finish by Lily. Nice little ball from Milbert here. A little takes one touch and bam. In the back of the net. Christine Lilly. Her 88th goal in the 35th minute. Assist from Tiffany Milbert. There's a good look from the Phillips goal cam. You know, so much hype on Christine Lilly is spent on how many games she's played for the U.S. National League. You forget she's an unbelievable score. Sixth all-time, rather make that fifth all-time internationally and the third greatest score in U.S. American soccer history behind Mia Hamm and some Michelle, Michelle... Yeah, that Michelle Akers Michelle shit? Akers. <laughs> Ringing the bell. Yeah, Lily, one of the most consistent U.S. players. Oh, just a wonderful player to train alongside, but to watch play. Just right there. Great touch to settle that ball that was flighted over her head. She throws a little head fake every time the ball is coming to her before she receives it. I and mean, she does all these little things that they try and teach those kids at the soccer camps, and they never listen. Lily was listening when she was at soccer camps in Connecticut, I'll she, tell you that. She's one of the hardest-looking players I've ever seen as well. Her, her endurance level, amazing. And here is the leading scores for the U.S. Oh, there's that Acres chick there's again. There's Michelle Acres right there, 105. <laughs> Lily just moving up to 88. Tiffany Milbert, though, right on her back. And Mia Hand, though, head and shoulders above everybody right now. Mia, the all-time greatest scorer in international soccer history, and I don't think she's going to ever lose that title. All-time. Men or women, which is the most impressive. I think that will hold forever. Fawcett fighting off Patricia Perez and earns a throw-in. There's, there's the only mistake you'll see from Christine Lilly today. But that trap just kind of roll under her foot. Chastain drives a deep one, easily won there by Monica Gonzalez. Lilly up, causing damage. Cindy Parlo, big presence, wins it. Sends off the defender and loses it. 
Perez fight for it. There's Patricia Perez wearing the captain's armband. That's another thing about the U.S. When they lose the ball, they go after it like rabid dogs. That good defense there, though, by Anna Del Boss, not allowing Milbert any chance to turn. Earns a whistle, though. Chastain takes it, drives it, looking for Parlo. One-time header. Not where she intended that one to go. Tomorrow, ABC's coverage of the State Farm U.S. Figure Skating Championship continues. It's the last chance for America's most talented ladies to qualify for Team USA. Salt Lake City Games coming up around the corner. That's tomorrow, 3 Eastern, 2 Pacific on ABC Sports. And this portion of the match brought to you by Bud Light. There's Lori Fair at midfield, given all kinds of time and space. Picks out Milbert, tracking down the left side. Tiffany gets it, squares up, 1v1 versus Del Boss. Now she's double teamed by one, almost by two. Here's Lily, already has one goal. Serves that one. It's like that crossed the line at some point. And it will be a goal kick for Mexico. Led the WSA with 10 assists last season. And she can score, she can service, she can run, she can win. There's not much she can't do. She can probably do my job, too. <laughs> Perez heads it out of bounds, throwing for the States. Lori Farrell will take it. Great crowd here at Charleston. Soccer-specific Blackbaud Stadium. Again, we said the A-League's Charleston Battery play here at I'm looking forward to the post game. They got their own English style soccer pub right behind us, which is mocking me as we speak. <laughs> Just a great environment. Standing room only tickets on sale. You see behind the Mexican goal. Several hundred fans lined up. A few more behind Rihanna, uh, rather Lakeisha Dean and her goal. Foudy wins that one. Chastain keeps it in. Swings it across the faucet. Wide open Sombrero on the right side. And she leads her. So, this has been a really good first half, too, for the U.S. Most of these players have not touched the ball since the, September 9th. Uh, it's been a long couple of years for the team, and with the wind-up of the WSA season, they've all kind of taken a break, a much-needed break, and now this is really the first time back. But it really is a, a, a credit to the depth of their talent and their training that they can step on the field here and just rock and roll. Corner kick. Long at the far post. Chastain sticks her head in there, wins it, goes over the bar. Goal kick for Mexico. And, you know, we mentioned at the outset there could be some fitness issues. We'll probably know more about that midway through the second half. But as far as Rust is concerned, they're looking pretty sharp. Actually, this is going to be a corner kick for the U.S., but they're playing a little sharper than I think maybe we both expected today. Yeah, they are. They're, they're playing to feet, precise passes, good pace, organized. It's impressive so far. I don't know if fitness would be a factor today because it doesn't look like Mexico is really challenging them. We're playing mostly in the Mexicans' uh, defensive third. Just a few minutes away, we got our halftime report, a profile of WUSA MVP Tiffany Milbert. Talk about the upcoming men's national team schedule yet. Yeah, that's right, they're just a couple months away from World Cup 2002, which will be live on the ABC ESPN family. Plus, we'll have first half highlights. If you missed those goals by Shannon McMillan and Christine Lilly, hang with us. We'll show them to you at halftime. You see Paulo almost breaking through. Sobrero steps up to re-attack. Cuts wide right. Perez on her. Gives up the bad ball. Lisa Gomez really read that one well. Unfortunately, she only has Iris Mora with her. It's like a 2v5 right now for Mexico. Slayton on her back. Sliding tackle. That's why, that's why she's one of the best in the college game right now and soon to be one of the best in the pros. Iris Mora. 21 goals for the Mexican national team. Easily their leading score. Del Bosque saves it. Right pullback. Serves one. Lakeisha Bean off her line. Gets it on its first hop. Quick outlet finds Lori Fair. Fair to McMillan. Just like that, they're beyond midfield. Milbrook making a run. That one a little too ambitious. 
It's really tough for the goalkeepers, too, in a game like this where they're not active constantly to get balls every once in a while. They have to stay plugged in mentally. It's very challenging. This portion of the match brought to you by Phillips. It's easy just to get caught daydreaming, but so far Lakeisha's doing really, really good. Well, we were talking earlier in the game, Michelle, about Alicia Kramer fighting Nicole, but also fighting for a starting spot, and she is right now at midfield. Looks like she's about to come in. A rare first half substitution, especially with only, what, two and a half minutes left in the first half. But Alicia Kramer, there she is, stretching, warming up. Looks like she's going to be getting the call. Not sure who for yet. Could very well be Lori Fair. And Lori looks fine. I think this just may be a coaching decision. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up yet. <laughs> you sound perplexed by that. I, I think it's tough for a player to go in with two minutes left. So I'm wondering if there's an injury. Gerardo at midfield, forced back, plays it to Vergara. To Del Bos, Chastain, there, bangs it off her and earns the throw in. Boy, great closing speed there by Brandy Chastain. And here is the substitution. Lori Fair, yeah, looks like she was caught a little off guard by that. I was watching her at midfield and eyes open up. And coming on out. Kramer will be a nice addition. She's tall, so she'll be winning the, the punts off the goalkeeper from Mexico. She likes to stay home, which is staying in the middle of the field and just dish and play make. There she is, a nice little fake to set up that pass. Finds Milbrit. Spinning around. Chastain, dangerous ball, got away from her. Iris Mora on the attack, 1v4. Has to force it out wide. Valderrama, double team. Can she get through it? No. Slayton picks it up, drops one, looking for Paulo. Takes a great skip. Here goes Paulo, 1v1. Caught from behind, pokes it away. Just off target. A fortuitous skip for Sydney Parlo. That one almost made it three love. Great skip. Cindy gets on it. Defender running up her back. Goalkeeper coming out. Just couldn't get, get the touch on it she wanted. One minute of stoppage time will be added. Cindy Parlow this is her 102nd U.S. game, just 23 years of age. Danielle Slate plays it back to Joy Fawcett. U.S. content just to knock it around in the back and head to the locker room with a two-love lead. They're trying to entice this Mexican team to kind of get out of the backfield there. They're not so they have fighting, some room. They? No, they're not. <laughs> no. Good composure then by the Mexicans, but... It is. It's a very disciplined defense. Oh, nice ball. Cindy Paula split the seam with a run. The pass, though, broken up. Milbert chasing, trying to win it. Just seconds remaining in this first half. Kate Sobrero lays out Perez. Quick restart for Mexico. Down the right side. Gonzalez attacking. And that's all she wrote on the first half. So after 45 plus minutes from Charleston, South Carolina, the U.S. women in their first ever appearance down here in the Palmetto State with a 2-0 lead. Christine Lilly, the game's second goal in the 35th minute. When we return, it's our halftime report. Profile of Tiffany Milbert and an update on the U.S. men's national team. You know that thrill you get when you're scorching the turf and taking on the world to bring home the cup? There's always a first time. You can get into the newest LEGO soccer sets. Now the action's kicked up to a whole new level. So with LEGO, when you make it, you feel it. LEGO is the one new to feel the power of the brain. New LEGO soccer. To feel the power of the brain.
would you like to lose that big belly and save big money? Now, there's the Abdur system, designed to aerobically burn fat as it flattens your abs in just minutes a day. And now it's yours for a fraction of the cost. In fact, we guarantee you'll lose up to two inches from your waist in just 10 days or your money back. Look, ab machines strengthen your muscles but won't reduce the size of your waist. And some exercise can actually make your ab muscles bigger. Only the Abdur's unique rotating torso trimmer targets your upper abs, lower abs, obliques, and lower back all in one fat-burning circular motion. You'll flatten your stomach in weeks, not months. We guarantee it. No more straining your back. The Abdur is ergonomically designed to take pressure off your spine as it massages your back. Imagine losing inches as you watch TV. Before I started using the Abdur system, I was very unhappy the way I looked. Ever since I started using the Abdur system, I started seeing immediate results and I feel so much happier and more confident in everything I do. My belly wasn't getting flat, and that was the area that I really needed to work on. So I started using the Abdur, and within a very short period of time, maybe about a month, I lost almost 10 pounds and 2 inches. This bulky machine costs up to $8,000. The Abdur does the work of all these machines. Millions have sold for five payments of only $29.95. But if you call now, we'll lower the price to five payments of only $19.95. That's a $50 savings. And if you order now, you'll receive the Abdur Nutritional Guide and the Abdovix Motivational Video, a $20 value, free. We guarantee you'll lose at least two inches from your waist in just 10 days or your money back for rock-hard abs and a slim, sexy waistline. All you have to do is order the Abdur today. Call now to order the Abdur for only five payments of $19.95 plus shipping and handling and save $50. Plus, get the Abdur Guide and Motivational Video free. To have the Abdur rush to your home, use your checking account just like a credit card. Card. Just have your account number ready or use these major credit cards. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call now. Need to refuel? Try a new Reese's Fast Break. Milk chocolate, soft nougat, Reese's peanut butter. Go, 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 go. New Reese's Fast Break. Refuel and go. We are back at Black Hawk Stadium in Charleston, South Carolina. It's halftime between the U.S. and Mexico women's national team. Welcome back. I'm Rob Stone. Four years, the staple at soccer games, scarves, and yeah, the U.S. national team finally has their own. Red and blue, it's a good-looking thing. You can pick it up at ussoccer.com and make sure to wear it to the next U.S. men's national team game as they get set for the World Cup and they host Honduras in Seattle, Washington, Saturday, March 2nd. Live coverage on ESPN, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. A lot of upcoming games not quite yet announced for the U.S. men's national team. Looks like they'll be on the road in Italy, Germany, and Ireland and hosting Ecuador and it looks like maybe how about that? When we come back, we'll profile the always energetic, excitable, and unpredictable Tiffany Milbrick. We're at halftime between the U.S. and Mexico. I think the reason our customer satisfaction index is so high at David Taylor is simply because we take care of the customers. At David Taylor, it's not just purchasing a vehicle at, at a dealership. It's, it's belonging to a family. I think every customer that leaves David Taylor feel that they've met someone that they can work with for years to come. Mix Nutty 6.5. Variety from the 80s, 90s, and today. Mix means variety. Houston's Mix 96.5. Gary, people need to know that Supart has the best prices on casual clothes. I agree. We save them money a lot more than suits. That's right. Now run a post on two. Hut, hut. January clearance on Bill Blasco shirt. Just $9.99. January clearance on sweater. Just $14.99. Suitmart, the original men's superstore. Four locations now open every day. 400 gold man Mike Modano and the stars try to shoot down Brendan Shanahan and the high flying wings. Watch the Western Conference Wildness on ESPN Wednesday Night Hockey. Red Wings at Stars, 8 Eastern, Wednesday on ESPN. These are quarter carrots, and these are half. They're beautiful. What kind of cut is that? This is a round cut. If you look hard, I'm sure you can see them. They're fantastic. Guard! Who's the guy? Who's this guy? For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. These are eight carrots, and these are ten carrots. Make it a Bud Light. 
When two smart cyber titans from Ask Jeeves got new Rumpo Quadra actions from their girlfriends, we expected a smart response. Well, a five o'clock shadow by noon. But the girls insisted. Slots were...